Hi guys, Corby here and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Hub. So the world's most popular open source OS, which is Ubuntu, released their latest version of the long-term support OS, that is 20.04, codenamed Focal Forza. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and install Ubuntu 20.04 on your virtual box in your Windows 10 operating system. So just in case you don't know what a virtual machine is, a virtual machine is a software that allows you to run your operating system in an app window on your desktop that behaves like a few separate OS without interfering with your main OS or your host OS. So in this case, my host OS is the Windows 10. So what we need to do now is to download the virtual machine and Ubuntu image itself. Let's go ahead with the download and installation. So first of all, to download VirtualBox, you have to visit virtualbox.org or you search for VirtualBox on Google and click on the first link. Once it is opened, you click on the downloads of download VirtualBox 6.1 and that section appears. So from here, you have to choose the type of host you want to use. And in our case, we are using the Windows 10 as our host. So you click on the Windows host option and your download starts. So with the installation of VirtualBox, it's quite simple, so I wouldn't demonstrate this in the video. All you have to do is open the setup and click on next until the setup starts and completes. This is how VirtualBox is going to be like once you install it and you open. So now the next thing to do is to download the Ubuntu ISO file. You can get this on Ubuntu.com and Ubuntu.com will click on Downloads. And under Downloads, you click on LTS 20.04 for Ubuntu Desktop. Please make sure whenever you are downloading or installing Ubuntu, you install the LTS version, which means long-term support, because for long-term support OS, it can run for over two years with support. So once it's done, the OS will be downloaded onto your downloads folder. It will take some time to download since it's 2.5 gigabytes. So I have mine here and there is no need to download. So you are ready to install the Ubuntu now. So back to your virtual box, you need to click on the new button here. And once you click on the button, you provide the name of your machine. In this case, I entered Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. Next is the machine location folder. You can choose to leave it as default or you provide another location for your machine. So next is the version and I'm using a 64-bit machine. So I have to choose Ubuntu 64-bit. And that's it. So let's click on next. Here you have a memory size and I have 16 gig RAM. So I think 6 gig will be okay for me. So I enter 6114 MB. If not, you can also increase from here, but the RAM size should not exceed the green mark or it shouldn't go past the green mark. Now you click on next. At the hardest section, we leave it as default then we click on create because we want to create a virtual hard disk now. So you leave the virtual hard disk file type as VDI which is default and you click on next. And also here you need to leave this one dynamically allocated. So basically, dynamically allocated option will allow your Ubuntu operating system to expand the disk size if required. And when it's fixed, it will not expand. So we need to click on next. So from here we choose a file location. That is where the Ubuntu 20.04 will be installed. And then the next thing to do is to select the virtual hard disk size. So I'll leave this as 10 gigabytes, but if you have more storage, you can increase it. So you click on create. So once you're done creating, you should be able to see your virtual machine here on the left side, which is Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So we select that machine. But it looks like we haven't provided a virtual disk yet. So we go to Settings, Advanced, and set the shared clipboard and drag and drop to buy direction. So this allows you to share your files between your host machine and your Ubuntu machine by directionally. Meaning you'll be able to copy from host to operating system and vice versa. Please leave the description and disk encryption to default. So now we click on the system and leave it as default. 
Under processor section, we have the number of CPU processors to choose, but it should not exceed the green line there. In display settings, you leave everything as default, and here in the storage, you provide a virtual disk, which is the location of your Ubuntu ISO file. So you click on the empty disk and choose the ISO file. Once we're done, we click on OK and we're ready to start the installation. So you can choose to close the warning signs at the top or you can also leave it if you want to. So now you see a new window, you can choose any language you want, so I choose English and click on install Ubuntu button. In the next window, you see the keyboard layout, so from here you choose whatever keyboard layout you use. So I choose English, Ghana, and I click on continue. Another window appears, which is the update and other software window. Click on normal installation, and under other options, you can choose to download updates while installing Ubuntu or not. This requires internet connection, and since I have one, I tick on both options, which is download updates while installing Ubuntu, and install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. So now we click on continue. So on the installation type, we have to leave it to default, which is erase disk and install Ubuntu. This is not going to wipe your main disk. It just cleans the virtual disk which is 10 gigabytes because we are installing on a virtual disk and not on your main hard disk. So we click on install now and click on continue. So the next step is your location. So I choose my physical location which is Accra and I click on continue button. From here we enter our details and password. My password is weak but then you can also change this later after installing the OS. So you click on continue and installation starts. So at this step, you don't need to do anything, so you just wait for a while for it to finish. After some time, you see a small window which says installation complete. You need to restart your computer in order to use a new installation. So click on restart now and the virtual machine restarts. So from here you have to press enter button to remove the installation medium. So the Ubuntu operating system restarts after that. And now we have our login credentials to log into the system. So you log in with the credentials provided during the installation and that's it. This time a new window appears again, you click on next, next next and done. You'll be able to see your desktop now, but then we have another issue from here. When you try to maximize the window, the desktop doesn't maximize, so we have to install a VirtualBox guest addition. And to install this tool, you have to open your terminal and copy this command onto your terminal. I'll provide this command in the description below. It's used to install some essential packages and also fix the full screen issue. Press enter and you enter your Ubuntu password and you press enter again. So here you press Y and after some time you see that the installation has finished. So you close your terminal and you click on devices on the virtual box windows and you click on insert guest additions CD image. Once you click on this, a window should appear and you click on run. From there you enter your password and you click on authenticate. A new terminal appears and installs your guest additions. And when it's done, you see this message as press return to close your window. And the window closes once you press on return. At this stage, you have to shut down your PC for effects to take place. So we click on power off. And after it's gone off, you power it back on again for the virtual machine to power on. So right now, if you observe, it's possible to open in full screen or maximize and minimize the window. 
So that's it for the installation of Ubuntu 20.04 in your virtual box. If you have any doubts or questions, feel free to drop a comment below. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon. Stay safe.